right, well, let's uh, get started painting our beautiful landscape. And I thought we might start with some blue paint here so we can begin with a beautiful blue lake right down here in the foreground, a blue lake. No, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's make that a blue sky instead. Yes, beautiful blue sky. And then down below here, of course, a very remote uh, wilderness area, but very peaceful, very nice place to uh, maybe put a vacation home, a four or five bedroom home with a, a big deck and maybe a TV dish and a swimming pool. And I mean, it would be nice, but we don't have the time. So why don't we just make it a one room tar paper shack instead, okay? But it's a happy little hovel, and uh, it'd be a real nice place maybe to do some painting or uh, maybe a little reading, or you could uh, write poetry or uh, maybe a manifesto, whatever your particular interests happen to be. Now, we see the door of the hovel opening up here, and a man is walking out carrying a package. Looks like he's maybe going down to the post office to mail something, uh, maybe to his uh, brother in Chicago for Easter. But he's going to have to get on his bicycle and ride way downtown, and he looks a little grumpy because he doesn't want to ride that far. But uh, luckily for him, now we see some uh, men from the government stepping out from behind the trees, and uh, these men have a car, and they say they would be more than happy to uh, get him a ride downtown. the nitrous, all right. <laughs> Good. I know everybody's really excited. Very exciting up in our part of the country here. Some very interesting news from our little part of the world this week, wasn't there? And I think all of us in this studio and around this city, I think we're all starting to look at Montana in a new light, aren't we? <laughs> Boy, new state slogan there. Montana, America's hideout. Isn't that great? <laughs> Come hide under the big sky. <laughs> As you know, America's most wanted man, the Unabomber, was living openly near Lincoln, Montana, one of my favorite towns, Lincoln, Montana. I'm, I'm sure I've been there. I'm sure they, always, they already have the new signs out. 60 miles to the home of the Unabomber. <laughs> See the Unabomber saloon. <laughs> You've been through Montana whew, very fast. Drive as fast as you want there. Anyway, the, uh, the stories about his arrest, I think, were very interesting. According to the newspaper, the Unabomber lived in a small cabin with no plumbing. He never bathed. And he fertilized his vegetable garden with his own feces, <laughs> which was interesting. And the story continued, the Unabomber who never married, now there's a shock. <laughs> I like to think what that would have been like. Honey, hey, stop pooping on the radishes. Come in here. Is this picture straight? You know, hey, I think the couch would look better over there. Anyway. Uh, he wrote that big manifesto about the evils of modern technology, and I suppose he had a point. Technology has, it's been a mixed blessing. It has done some bad things. On the other hand, do we really want to be out pooping in our gardens? I mean, I don't, let's look at it. I bet he raised some really good vegetables that way. Can you imagine at the end of the summer him out visiting his neighbors? Hey, got a bunch of extra zucchini here. Did you guys, I mean, hey, I'm only going to throw it out. You know, you guys want to... 
That's okay, that's okay. Actually, the, uh, the news people were swarming all over Lincoln, Montana, the last few days interviewing his neighbors. I, I think we, we have a clip of that, don't we? I think we do. The Unabomber was caught here in Montana this week, and as we all know, he lived alone, he never bathed, and he used his own feces to fertilize his vegetables. Now, Carl, you were one of his closest friends. Did you notice anything strange about him? Well, it seemed pretty uh, normal to me. <laughs> hey, looked okay to me. Hi. Right. Interesting. The Unabomber went to Harvard, just like Bill Gates. Um, <laughs> no. no, let's see, you made that joke in your own mind. That's I'm gonna, I'm not going that way. I'm going to see, Bill Gates, he embraced technology and he became the richest man in the world. The Unabomber, well, he took, he took the road less traveled. <laughs> way less traveled. I mean, they had, the FBI had to hike up the less traveled road. And the, they say they're still, they're, they're still searching the cabin for evidence. And I guess my question is, how long does it take to search a 10-foot by 10-foot shack? <laughs> I, mean, what are they, I guess they found the critical piece of evidence on the coffee table. It was a big envelope that said, congratulations, Unabomber may have already won $10 million. <laughs> no, that's our man. Actually, as we read, it was his brother that turned him in. His, his, his own brother turned him in. So I guess, you know, the Unabomber gets one phone call. That's probably who he called. Like, way to go, Leonard! <laughs> I'm in jail now! Thanks a lot! While oh, you wrecked my bike. I did not! Did you? Did not? Did you? <laughs> Sibl uh, sibling rivalry. Anyway, the, uh, I think the trial should be interesting, although I'm a little concerned. Apparently, he's hired Johnny Cochran, which I think, wow, it's, you know... They're gonna, you just know they're going to play the race card. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be ugly. The human race card. I don't know. Anyway, anyway. Well, the Unabomber notwithstanding, technology, it, it is all around us, and it's, it's constantly improving. Just take a look at this new medical service that's just opened. You need the best medical coverage you can afford. And we're an HMO that needs to get you in and out as fast as possible. Because, quite frankly, the insurance companies are riding our ass. And that's why we're called HMO Express. At HMO Express, we handle all your medical needs, including gastrointestinal. Yes, I'd like an enema, please. You want to supersize it? Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> Not making that mistake again. <laughs> okay, one regular enema coming up. And we have complete maternity services. Yeah, I need a C-section right away, please. Pull forward, please. Okay. <laughs> and if you don't deliver in 30 minutes, it's free. We can also handle your routine testing needs. Yeah, I need a drug test for work. Okay, pull forward and pee into the first window, please. Okay, come on. So go ahead, right here. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. Not so good. Not so good. Okay, that's good. And don't forget the HMO Express Automated Prostate Exam. And we offer our special mobile services, including long-range inoculation. Yeah, I'm on uh, 15th near the bridge. I need a tetanus shot. He's at coordinates. One, five, seven, three. Okay, I got it. And finally, there's our specialty, the drive-by breast exam, where you can not only get a second opinion, but a third and a fourth in a matter of seconds. Good. Very nice. Yeah. Very helpful. HMO Express, also home of the seven-minute body loop.
on education. Uh, could you just, okay, good. This is Focus on Education, and joining me tonight is Mr. Gladding McBean, author of the just released study, What's Wrong with Education Today? That uh, is correct, and I'm very glad to be here to, <laughs> to talk with you about this. Have you read my study yet? Actually, I'm a little embarrassed. I just got this a minute ago, so. Okay. <laughs> but I think I may have spotted a small uh, printing error on oh. the cover here. I, I don't think so, because I proofread okay, that well, myself. Okay, we'll see here. The title of your study is What's uh -huh. Wrong with Education Today? Uh-huh. And uh, <laughs> you spelled education E-J. You. Well, that, that, see, that's what you say, but I think what you're bringing up there is exactly what is wrong with education today. Well, I'm not because exactly... people spend more time quibbling about little bitty nitpicky things than focusing on what our young people ought to be learning okay, today. Okay, okay, yes. And it ahead. worries me, and uh, uh, frankly, it ought to worry other people, that when you ask a lot of the kids to name our first president today, they'll say, uh, Abraham Lincoln. And that's not right. Well, of course it's not. Lincoln was third. But most kids have no idea that George Washington Carver was our first president. Oh, sure, maybe they've seen his face on the dime, but other than that, they don't have a clue. You know, actually, the, the first problem pre is, you see, ma'am, the problem is today's kids don't read. Yes, that's They're true. They're too busy watching that MTVB, and even those that do read don't read good. Uh -huh. They don't know the great writers. They don't know the names of Charles Dickinson and, and Samuel Shakespeare and Rudyard Kipple and Edgar Alpo and Ernest Hemingway. Those names mean nothing to those kids. That's too bad. Not to mention, of course, the great female writers like uh, Joyce James. Right. And, and when it comes to stuff like geology, I mean, just, <laughs> you can forget about it, because most kids can't name one country from another. Geography. <laughs> Don't get me started on that subject, either. Okay. And another thing is that most kids can't even name the different capitals of the United States. Well, can you? All 35 of them. <laughs> well, that's great. That's Why don't great. you just go right ahead and test me there, ma'am? Okay, let's see, uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma City. Oh, good. Uh, Delaware? Delaware City. Uh, actually, no, it's Dover. Already? We were just getting started. It seemed to... <laughs> oh, well, it's been a pleasure there. talking with Read you. Read my study and learn the disturbing facts about so-called education in this country. We're out of time. Find out why only 15% of American kids can do basic math and the other 60% are completely ignorant. <laughs> my guest has been Mr. Gladie McBean. You know, most kids have no idea where on the human body the semicolon is even located. <laughs> this has been focused on education. And be sure and read the section on Karl Marx there, We're too. We're out of time, He was Mr. the McBean. one with the red okay, curly over. hair, We're and he done. never spoke. <laughs> 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 Studio amplification for Almost Live, provided by American Music, now open in Tacoma. This is The Late Report. Well, Dr. Stephen Hawking will conduct a lecture next week at the Seattle Opera House entitled, Is Time Travel Possible? Now, I don't want to give away the answer to that, but part of his lecture will involve having the audience get on a bus and travel to Enumclaw. <laughs> the Museum of Flight in Seattle will soon be getting the very first Air Force One, which was used by President Eisenhower in 1959. The plane still has an Oval Office, and some graffiti on the bathroom wall that reads, I'm Vice President Richard Nixon, and I just joined the Mile High Club. <laughs> Dan Savage, a gay cross-dressing columnist for The Stranger, will be a delegate to the King County Republican Convention in May. There is expected to be some confusion at the convention, however, since Savage, when in drag, is virtually a dead ringer for Congresswoman Linda Smith. <laughs> A Wenatchee man has formed a company called the City of Wenatchee Incorporated and says the City of Wenatchee must find another name or he'll find them $10,000 a day. <laughs> Subsequently, another resident has formed a company called a Wenatchee Man Incorporated and says the first guy owes him big time. 
In King County, telephone con artists have been gathering social security and bank account numbers by posing as the county jury selection committee. Victims were relieved to find out that they had only been robbed and that they were not actually scheduled <laughs> for jury duty. A consultant says it will cost $197 million to remodel the kingdom. The consultant, however, did offer a less expensive alternative, which involves just putting up new curtains. <laughs> the Thomas S. Foley Institute for Public Policy and Public Service at Washington State University was dedicated on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. It took two days because of the time involved in getting both of the big bronze ears into place over the entrance. <laughs> And now, with a health commentary, is our intern, Brooks Macbeth. Brooks? It's your crowd, Brooks. Thanks, John. You got Thank it. you. All right. This week, state officials announced that Washington State's birth rate is at a 20-year record low, a decline due to the fact that baby boomers are getting older and that more people are now focusing on careers. Mm -hmm. While careers are important, so are kids. And that's why I am stepping forward to make the following offer. I, Brooks Macbeth, am willing to impregnate every woman in the state of Washington. Now, 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 sure, this is a personal sacrifice, but it's one I'm willing to make for the children. Thank you. Of course, I won't actually be there to help raise the child, but imagine how cool it would be to point to the TV and say, look, there's daddy. <laughs> I'd also like to add that I am six feet tall, a good height for breeding professional athletes. I am very well educated. Well, the you dub. Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> and that my sperm is both healthy and considered by many to be quite charming. <laughs> now, now, there may be a couple of you out there with concerns about being intimate with a complete stranger, and I can understand that. So some of my previous lovers have put together a little videotape to help vouch for my performance in the sack. I was, I was going through a rough time. <laughs> anyway, anyway, the point is, I am willing to have sex with each and every one of you. That's my commitment to you. You know, it's time we all put aside our own petty self-interest and do this for the children. <laughs> our children. <laughs> so please, I mean, please, send your name and address and when your husband or boyfriend won't be home to have sex with Brooks. <laughs> P.O. Box 24525, Seattle, Washington, 98124. And remember, it's for the children. Thank you, Brooks. Thank you. That's, that's, that's very noble of you, Brooks. It, it, it's for the children. Yes, I understand. It is. I understand that, Brooks. That's, that's very noble of you. Thanks. Finally, <laughs> Governor Lowry signed a bill making lethal injection the preferred method of execution in the state of Washington, still at the bottom of the list, being chained to a rock while wild animals eat you alive. <laughs> this has been The Late Report. We'll be right back, so stay where you are. Well, I think it's very good. Right? Okay, once again, I think we'd all like to thank Governor Lowry for declaring this Poetry Month in the state of Washington. And we're glad to be doing our part right here at Bill Dugan's Flame Restaurant in downtown Eatonville. Okay. All right. We have one last contestant tonight for the Poetry Slam, okay? He's been with us before, Jim Greger. Broken tractor, tractor broken, broken tractor, go into town, fix it, fix it Dave, 
Tractor fixed. <laughs> fixed tractor. <laughs> Beautiful, wasn't it? Beautiful. That's just about all the time we have on Almost Live this week. Don't forget to turn your clocks forward. And uh, gosh, there's the number if you want to get uh, tickets to come down here. It's just a wonderful, fun-loving group. We'd love to have you, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>